Hey, g'day guys, it's Rod here again. Look, in today's video, I'd like to talk about fish food and using scarab beetle larvae, or the curl grub, which are found throughout the world as fish food for your fish. Now, it's a fantastic fish food, however, in the process of doing so, feeding my fish, unfortunately, I killed a couple of fingerlings. And in today's video, I'd like to show you how you can avoid killing your fingerlings. The curl grub is a scarab beetle and there's 2,200 different species here in Australia and there's a jolly lot more species throughout the world so they are very common. Uh, they're also called a white grub to some people or a curl curl grub in other areas but essentially they're a scarab beetle. Now there's two main pest species of the scarab beetle here in Australia, the Argentinian uh, scarab beetle and the African scarab beetle. Now they have been introduced. Now all the larvae, they do live in the ground and regardless of which species they are, they have a, a C um, shape of their body with a couple of black dots on them. So that, that's their distinguishing uh, marks. They stay underground for a couple of years as, as, uh, as a larvae. And then uh, when the conditions are right, uh, usually with a lot of moisture in the ground, then they all start to come out of the ground. And here in, a, in Cairns, we have wet seasons and every, uh, say, November to February each year, we get a huge amount of these uh, curl grubs coming out of the ground because it's easy for them to, to come out. And that's when I scoop them up and I throw them into my fish tanks. Now these grubs do grow up to 60 millimeters long or two and a half inches, so they're really huge and you can't miss them. They're on the ground. They've only got a couple of little legs at the front, uh, a little bit of hair on the body as well, but otherwise it's mostly a smooth white skin with a couple of little follicles of hair. Look, I, I feed my fish, as, you, as you've probably seen in a lot of other videos, I feed my fish all sorts of different foods that I find in the garden, crickets and grubs and, and um, even witchetty grubs. So up here in far north Queensland, we get these, these big grubs, bigger than my thumb, called curl, curl grubs. And there's other different species like witchetty grubs. People think they're all the same thing, but they're really not. Um, what I wanted to mention was, I feed them to the chickens most of the time, but this week I chucked a few into the fish. And this one floating here, I just wanted to fish it out here. And it's, it's quite interesting, just to get a, get a sense of the size of these grubs. You can see here, that's, that's the size of the grub we're talking about. Quite a large grub compared to my finger. It's probably, I don't know, six, seven centimetres or a couple of inches for those in the States, um, in the Imperial system. But look, I was wondering why this thing floats, because normally when I throw it in, we've got so many uh, juvenile perch here, they just they just smash it. It's really great to watch. Um, now, I love nature, but it's a natural, natural process, hey. Now, on closer inspection, it's a little bit sad and a bit of a warning to everybody else. But if we have a look closely, you can see that this grub has a tail. Now, these grubs don't have tails, so there's only one, um, one explanation, and that is one of my small perch has gone in there. If I peel this off, you can see one of my fingerlings has got himself in there. He's eaten the insides out, as they do, and this skin usually floats and I pick up the skin later on. But as you can see, Yesterday, he must have died. All I've got is left the skin. So they certainly like them, they certainly eat them. But sadly, this guy didn't make it. So it's a lesson there to myself, and I thought I'd share that with you. Because uh, when you do feed young fish, food that's bigger than them, realistically, you know, in the future, I'll, I'll split down the middle. So that way, this will never happen again. But normally, I just throw the whole thing in. I don't even kill it, I just throw it in, and the fish just, just attack it. I keep my fish uh, quite quite ferocious, I guess, um, but natural. It's a natural process. So any worms, any crickets, any grasshoppers, anything at all that's eating your plants, throw it in, give it a try. Bananas is another great way um, to supplement your feed. Uh, you don't have to buy store-bought product all the time. Although if, you, if you're on a commercial scale, okay, you need to get the protein right. You need to get the weights and ratios right. You need to know how, how many fish you're producing and how many pots of lettuce or whatever it is that you're doing. But if you're in a backyard operation, throw everything that you can find, just chuck it straight in and see if they eat it. Um, nearly all insects the fish will eat. And it's a great way of supplementing the fish's diet and um, it's quite fun to watch too, actually. 
But in this case, sadly, I thought I'd share that with you. In this case, uh, you yeah, know, I lost a fingerling. Normally that's all I find floating. <laughs> 